Well, hello and a warm welcome to you all. Thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Mark Morley and I'm delighted to be hosting another event for the Good Governance Academy. As always, it's great to see so many registrations coming in from across the globe. I see some familiar names in the room, but for those who are new here, please do let us know where you're from in the chat window below. While we wait for a few more people to join us, I'll share some Zoom tips for those not familiar with this platform. If you can't see the control panel on your screen, please press the ALT key on your keyboard. That will give you access to the control panel where you'll find the chat box and the question box and also the reaction buttons. We do enjoy seeing your reactions. I see some are already using them, so please feel free to applaud or hit the thumbs up to show your support. If you have any questions during the event, please pop these in the question box, not in the question, uh, not in the chat box, please. Um, I'll be happy to ask these during the Q&A sessions. We do have two planned uh, today, but we can ask in between uh, if, if we deem it necessary. Uh, do also feel free to use the chat box to share your thoughts at any time. We encourage you to connect with each other in chat box, but also share, share your thoughts and experiences as we run through the uh, session. For those not familiar with the Good Governance Academy, we're a non-profit organization that was established by Professor Mervyn King back in 2019. We collaborate with universities, business schools, uh, professional bodies, and other organizations around the world to educate and empower leadership to drive ethical and sustainable change. We run uh, regular webinars on current topics. And if you'd like to head over to our uh, website, you can see what we've got planned. Um, we'll post a link to that in the window below. I'd also encourage you to join our mailing list. And if you follow us on LinkedIn, you'll also be able to be kept informed of uh, forthcoming events. In addition to the webinars, we host a colloquia twice a year. Uh, our 12th colloquia will run on the 7th of November, and the registrations are uh, on our website and open for that, so you can head over there to check that out. These are high-profile events which have been attended by tens of thousands of people, and the output of these is shared with over 5 million professionals through our support member network. We run showcase events to promote courses which the Academy has endorsed, and the endorsement program is available to organisations um, any, any organization and it involves a, a robust assessment to ensure the highest standards are maintained. The courses we endorse are those that we feel address uh, business critical issues and provide users with current and relevant content, uh, content. And our next showcase is on the 24th of October. Today's webinar is part of our uh, interesting advancements program and it focuses on the role of civil society organizations in monitoring public procurement projects. The case study today is on Moldova, and I'm really looking forward to hearing about the, how the Partnership for Transparency and the local organisation that they've partnered with are helping to create sustainable change. So I'd like to hand over now to our first guest, Dr. Heidi Fink, who is an advisor at PTF Europe. Um, Heidi, thanks so much for joining us today. Can I ask you to introduce yourself to our community and tell us about your work uh, that you've been doing with PTF? Yes, thank you very much, Mark. Um... It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, hello, everyone. I see from the chat that there are quite a few people um, who know me. Um, mm -hmm. My name is Heidi Fink. I'm a German national. I've been with the Partnership for Transparency for a little bit over 10 years now. I work as an advisor. Um, and in the project that we're presenting here today, I'm the director um, for the Increasing the Integrity in Public Procurement in Moldova project. Should I start with my presentation or are we go into? Yeah, that'd okay, be great. then I will share my slides. I hope you can see them now. Uh, we can, yes. Good. So as Mark was saying, we're presenting to you our project in, in Moldova about civil society monitoring of public procurement. And we are we have prepared this presentation um, around three guiding questions that we would like to present to you. The first one is, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about civil society monitoring. What is it and how can we do it successfully? So that's the work of my organization, the Partnership for Transparency. Then I'm going to present a country approach. How can we design a country level program around monitoring um, public procurement? And then after this international perspective, I'm gonna hand over to um, our friend and colleague from Moldova, Carolina, who's going to present the country example in Moldova, and she's going to talk about what we have achieved and what we have learned in four years um, of our five-year project in, Mold in Moldova. 
Um, I invite everybody to, if you have any comments, questions, please put them in the chat um, and Mark uh, will let me know um, and I, we can have a discussion. If not, we have time to, to discuss afterwards. I cannot hear or see you, so if I don't read anything, Mark, you don't interrupt me, I'll just keep uh, rambling on. Okay, okay. <laughs> Good. Um, so first of all, the Partnership for Transparency uh, is an international uh, civil society organization founded in 2000 with headquarters in Washington, D.C., but represented in Europe, Asia, and Africa. We are a volunteer-based organization with about 70 experts, um, advisors around the world. And we cooperate with local civil society organizations to fight corruption, strengthen transparency, integrity, accountability in low and middle income countries. We have worked with over 160 local CSOs on more than 285 projects and counting uh, in about 55 countries. And you can see the website. Um, so I'm not going to spend any more time talking about that. Come visit us online and learn about our work. Um, The approach that um, we're taking and that we're talking about today, civil society monitoring, um, there are three main things that um, define civil society monitoring. It's, it's, it's local. So it's the communities, the members of the community that monitor public services to hold leaders accountable through different um, activities that I'm going to talk about in a second. It is a bottom-up approach. So it's those who are impacted, who understand the context, who have the legitimacy and the public trust to monitor um, um, public service delivery or public procurement um, or whatever the project is about. We believe in a constructive approach, a non-confrontational, engaging and cooperating with authorities. So it's a little bit the opposite of the rights-based approach. Um, um, our um, work is to try to engage and cooperate with authorities and try to jointly find solution, solutions. So identify problems, challenges, um, but then cooperate with um, authorities to find uh, solutions. Of public procurement, so civil society monitoring of public procurement, this is local CSOs and in Moldova also investigative journalists. They um, address the problem from two angles um, on a case-based level. And Carolina is going to talk much more about this. This is just the overview. So the cases, they um, monitor um, processes of public procurement. They expose corruption and waste, um, things that went wrong in a particular process of public procurement. And they ensure that the findings, um, the mishaps that uh, happened in these processes will be corrected. And then the second part that's um, probably the more important one is they formulate recommendations to improve the system itself, to improve laws, regulations, and processes. And our role as an international uh, organization, we support our local partners through expertise and experience. We've done this in, in a number of countries around the world. So we have the technical expertise and we have the experience of how um, this was done in other places. and. We provide training, coaching, and good practices. We provide funding. In some cases, we have small funds available, but mostly we jointly apply for projects with our local partners, as in the project that we're presenting here. And we add an international dimension. Uh, together with the local partner, we are um, in a position where we can pro provide neutral expertise and also the attention of the international community watching, which is sometimes helpful. Our experience, um, we have a knowledge base with over two decades of projects. The link is down there, so um, please check it out. There's just a few documents that I would like to point out. We have, um, and they're all linked in the presentation. So you will receive the presentation and you can click on the pictures and take you to the document. Um, we have um, a document that provides an overview of the tools that we have implemented um, in about 20 years. So all the tools that um, we have worked with in, in, in the countries that we have um, been active. The second one is an overview of the experience that we have uh, had um, in our work around the world. We have a guide on public procurement that was developed together with EDIS. So this shows uh, CSOs how they can monitor public procurement. So for people interested in this topic, probably of particular interest, and then there's one um, that I have here is a publication with U4, Anti-Corruption Center, that extracts the lessons learned 
um, of projects in the health sector over 15 years that shows what are the dimensions that um, are important for projects to be successful. I would like to talk about that for a few minutes. So overall, from the experience um, in, in the health sector, um, we have identified four dimensions um, that determine the success of um, monitoring projects. Um, this is taken from the health sector, but I believe it also applies to, to other sectors. The first is um, that we have to find the right partners. So as an international organi organization, we're totally dependent on, on our partners. Um, we have to be successful in engaging the community. Um, we have to get the buy-in of authorities. And we have to come up with a design and implementation of the project that can be successful. I'm going to talk about each one of them for just a minute, um, but I invite you to check out the, the publication, um, this U4 publication. I have linked it again here in this presentation to give you more, more details. You will notice that um, the project context or the country context um, is pretty much determined. So the partners, community, and authorities part is basically the situation in the country that we find. The only thing that we can really influence is, is the project, how we design and implement the project. Um, just a few words about um, the partners. So obviously the challenge is that um, it's difficult to know as an international organization who we can, who we can work with. Um, you learn um, your partner only during the project. So the approach that we're taking here is that we try to um, uh, nurture a long-term relationship with partners. We grow a network of partners and we do repeated um, um, projects with the same partners in the same countries. We, the dimensions or the, the items that we found um, are key about the partners. They have to be qualified, committed. Um, they have to be embe embedded in the community. They have to have the clout and the convening power to make things happen. And they have to be trusted by the community. I don't want to go into more detail at this point, but um, at the end of my presentation, I would like to talk about how we found that um, in Moldova. Um, so I'm going to pass to the second part, the, the community. Um, it's again, the, the, the contextual factors, the, the community that we work in is um, pretty much predetermined. So we can um, try to foster support and enhance capacity and try to strengthen the community, but it's difficult um, um, to change the, the setting. Um, so we have to design the project based on under an understanding of, of the community. So um, if we can, I think it's good to start with a small project. Um, we didn't do this in Moldova. We dove straight into a five-year program, but uh, we got lucky that uh, things are working out excellent with a new partner as well. Um, but if it's possible, of course, it's um, it's helpful to start with small projects to learn to know uh, to get to know your partner, to learn the community, and then um, to build up um, projects. Securing the buy-in of um, authorities, um, it's what we have found in in reviewing the projects uh, in the health sector is that. Um, we have to identify the the right people, um, those in in suitable positions who are who are interested. Um, and what was particularly helpful is if we could get buy-in from from different levels and different positions, not just relying on one partner, um, um, but trying to find different sources and levels of of support. And also to engage the authorities to share the the success and the glory of the um, of the project, which I think is one thing that has worked particularly well in in Moldova. Um, then the project design, um, I mean, it's um, what we have found is pretty much the same lessons um, that I think most will hear, um, that you will hear generally. It's it's coming up with a strategy that um, objectives that are ambitious, but obje uh, realistic and feasible. So don't bite off more than, than you can chew. Um, spending time on planning before the project starts. Uh, all this sounds very easy, but... Um, once you, when you actually are in the project reality, then you have your deadlines, and um, it's it's hard to spend time on on planning before starting to get things done. Um, the non-confrontational approach has uh, proved as as um, 
as quite successful. Flexibility um, is one of the things that has also been very helpful in Moldova. In a minute, when I present to you the um, the project design, it will look like a great plan that we had from the beginning. But if you look at what we had at the beginning and what we're presenting now as our theory of change has changed quite a lot, has evolved throughout the project. Um, and then, of course, monitoring, evaluation, learning is always a mantra. Um, it depends. Uh, I think um, if there are small projects, we have to find the right balance. Uh, high requirements of monitoring and evaluation um, might be more of a hindrance than um, than useful. Sustainability, um, the main challenge once the project is over, what's going to happen afterwards? Can't say anything about that in Moldova, but we hope to uh, we hope to have achieved something sustainable. So those are um, the dimensions of success. Um, this has been very quick, but I think um, I would. The idea is to give you an overview of the things, the dimensions that we have found. Please have a look at the at the publication, and you will see much more details on on each of these. Um, uh, can, I, can I? Quickly yes, please. Into the question there. So I just wondered, of those four dimensions, which presents the biggest challenge when you start these um, these engagements? Well, the um, I think it depends on the project. Um, what um, our former president says: the finding the right partner is half the battle. And I think, from an international perspective, I um, that is true because we're not on the ground um, in many cases. Sometimes we come visit, um, but. As an international organization, we are very much dependent on what the partners do. So engaging the community, securing the buy-in of the authorities, all of that is our partner, is the local uh, organization. So I think that's the that's the key thing to, to the whole, um, if you have a good partner, then things can happen. And if not, it's very difficult. We can't, we, we can't make them do the right thing. Um, so I would say that's, in my opinion, we have a few people from PTF here. I mean, when we have a discussion later, I'm, I'd be glad if they can chip in. Many of them have a lot more experience than me. Um, but that's that would be the the short answer to that. Um, I mean, you and just to say, I think you have to have everything in place, right? If uh, either one of them don't work, if you don't have uh, the community that is willing and able to engage, if you don't have authorities, if they block it, so the whole thing can crumble on either one of these dimensions. But the main thing to carry something forward, to be able to judge what is feasible in this community, how can we work with authorities, get their buy-in, get the engagement, that's the partner. Right. So um, I hope that answers the question. I think we can um, yes. discuss more. Um, now, the country approach. Um, this is a country-level program um, that I would like to present here. Just briefly an overview, and I have a flyer that will be shared, um, Mark, that you're going to share with, with everyone with more information. So again, this is a quick flight with the helicopter, and then you, if you're interested in more, contact us or check out the flyer. This is our project. It's from September 2020 through June 2025. It's PTF with Edis Vitorul. Um, it's a $1.7 million project funded by the U.S. government. The overall goal is increased public procurement transparency through CSO monitorings to hold stakeholders accountable. So we're monitoring public procurement. Broken down into three objectives. This is all a bit shortened, so the, the longer version you can see in the flyer, but to increase the capacity. So the goal is that CSOs and, and investigative journalists are equipped to conduct monitoring. The second one is the monitoring itself to ensure that more that monitoring is happening in, in the Republic of Moldova, that our project is fostering this. Um, so that actual procurement procedures and processes are, are monitored. And then policy dialogue is that the findings and recommendations resulting from monitoring activities result in um, rectification, corrective action, in, um, and also in improvements of the system. So on the case-related base, that things that we found on the systems level, that um, system, um, the laws, regulations, the e-procurement system, and so on, are improved. So we have this uh, theory of change. As I said, the, the whole thing, everything that I'm presenting is um, adapted, but this, this was um, pretty much the original idea, is that if civil society investigative journalists are trained and supported to meaningfully monitor procurement proce processes, and if they succeed in monitoring procurement procedures and documenting irregularities, that's the second goal, the monitoring is happening, 
and if they extract lessons and share recommendations in a cooperative and institutionalized, institutionalized way with stakeholders, that's the policy dialogue, then stakeholders will feel like they're held accountable, they will act with integrity, and um, this, the civil society and investigative journalists will contribute to improving the systems, the system, the laws, regulations, and processes. So if we achieve our three objectives, basically we're achieving the, the, the goal of the project. I will continue, uh, Mark, as long as you're nodding your head. I, I can only see Mark and, and Carolina, so I don't know what the others are doing, but as long as they don't start, start shaking their head, I will continue. Yeah, I'll let you know. Okay, good. Um, so I have a, an overview. Um, the the project goal, um, and this is what I said. We've developed this as we as we as we went along, and I think that was also a very healthy uh, process. To we had this idea, but as the project was um, evolving, um, this is now the 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 way we see our project achieving its goal. So we have this um, increased public procurement and transparency through CSO monitoring as the overall goal and what we're striving to all our outputs and activities should foster a strong S ecosystem of CSO monitoring. So that's our North Star, so to say. We're implementing the project in, in four phases. Um, September 2020 through May 2021 was the inception phase. The objective was for the partners to understand the context to agree on a project plan. We produced the baseline study um, and stakeholder analysis. So you can see, I said before, the planning uh, should take quite some time, and you can see how long how long we've spent on this. Um, and I think that's one of the ex excellent thing of, things about having a five year project that you can take the time before and after your activities to make sure you're doing the right thing, and also to make sure that you're driving home your results. The second objective that's the capacity building. Um, CSOs are equipped to conduct monitoring. We produced a monitoring guide that I shared before, and we did training for CSOs and journalists. Um, that contributes to the strong ecosystem, and um, Carolina is going to talk more about that. Um, the monitoring itself, that was uh, the third phase. Um, procurement procedures are appropriately, appropriately monitored so that the project produces activities that lead to stronger and more effective and more monitoring of public procurement. The key things that we did was a grants program. So we gave $300,000 to uh, in two rounds to sub-grantees who conducted projects. Um, we produced the digital platform, which is available online now, a one-stop shop for anyone interested in public procurement. Uh, Mark, I think we should share that as well then in, in material that we, that we share, please. I, I will send it to you. And we've established a, a coalition of monitors. So those are the people who are conducting the monitoring. And Carolina is going to talk much more about this, so I'm just going to give you the overview. And the fourth part is the policy dialogue. Um, the objective is that findings and recommendations lead to action. So the key output here is the National Platform on Public Procurement, the NPPP, um, which I think is an exceptional result um, where we bring stakeholders from all sectors together to discuss um, based on the findings, based on recommendations from CSOs, how to improve the system. But again, I will leave all of that to Carolina to prepare, um, present you the details. So these capacity building, the monitoring, and the policy dialogue foster the ecosystem, which then will help us achieve the the goal. What's special about this? I think the 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 fact that it's a five year program. Many times the projects are much shorter. You, you can see that the inception phase and also the policy dialogue is is a long time. Um, we're finished with the with the monitoring actually already now um, in September, um, and we have eight months um, to to drive home those results. And we can see that the policy dialogue, the multi-stakeholder platform, the results that we're achieving now are really the the most interesting part. Um, so that's the overview. Um, I wanted to say the the I mean. Just these four dimensions, uh, as I said, I said m much of this before already. I mean, from an international perspective, um, this project is, uh, from our perspective as PTF, is extremely is going extremely well. Um, the partner, I mean, he, um, uh, as I said, is the most important part. With Edis, we're lucky to have uh, basically everything that that one could ask for. They are qualified, they're committed, and they're embedded in the community. Um, 
they have they are requested to provide input into um, government um, um, deliberations. Uh, they have the convening power and the trust of the community. So we are very lucky to have them. Um, we found a community that is willing and able so that there are, it's, Moldova is a very small country, but there are lots of um, people interested in conducting monitoring activities. We have had lots of applications for our trainings. We've had lots of applications for our grants program. And the people are uh, who are receiving the training, who are receiving the funds for the program are truly engaged. They're producing excellent results. Um, so we are very lucky in that. Um, the authorities have um, are engaging um, the multi-stakeholder platform that Carolina is going to present is going excellent. Um, Everybody is there. They are discussing. They are um, considering input from from civil society and from uh, this multi-stakeholder platform in general. And they're responding. They're actually actively requesting our input. Um, so uh, this is going as well, um, going excellent as well. Um, and the project, um, I think I've, I've said all that, the flexibility um, has really helped us. Um, if you had seen what we planned before, it's it, it's different now. And I think it's um, so far it's going really well. We can't say anything about sustainability yet, but we're working on that. These activities are to invite people interested uh, to work with us, um, to, to come forward and get in touch. So that's... Um, it from my part, um, Mark. The idea was not to turn over to Carolina, unless yes, we do. Anybody, yeah, we, we do have a, a question actually for you, uh, Hardy. Um, do you? Um, it says here. Do you mean the state uh, government can voluntarily submit itself in its procurement for your monitoring? So uh, sorry, who can submit itself? The, the state government can voluntarily submit itself in its procurement for your monitoring. That the that they could volunteer and say please monitor us is um I mean the 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 CSOs investigative journalists they would choose what what to monitor um I I'm not aware that the government would say please monitor this um I I'm Karina I don't know if you have experience in that uh, it's the journalists and the the CSOs who decide what to monitor. Uh, usually, the authority avoids to, to ask us to monitor them, uh, but uh, we have also cases uh, like National Agency for Solving Complaint ask us to monitor them because they know uh, we come at the end with good recommendation in order to improve the processes. And they would like to know um, opinion from exterior in order to improve uh, their quality of activity of procedure and so on. <laughs> if I can add, Mark, just I think the, the attitude of uh, public authorities, the attitude of government is extremely important is do they welcome this activity in general? Do they say that this is a, a these people are just making problems or do they think that this is an external oversight that can actually help identify problems and help identify solutions? So I think it, it is key the way they see it. But I wouldn't know to, yeah. to volunteer. Actually, we are looking for, if there are projects where we could do this, design a project together with a public procurement agency or a ministry of finance, I think that would be wonderful. Hmm. But we haven't had any requests yet. Yeah, I mean, you, you would think that they would welcome the support because it's you know an extra pair of eyes that they, they don't necessarily have. So, okay. Well, wonderful. Thanks, uh, thanks, Heidi, for, uh, for taking us through that. We're going to hand over now to, uh, to Carolina Ungaranu. She's the Deputy Director at the Institute for Development and Social Initiatives in, in Moldova. So a warm welcome to you, Carolina. Thank you, too, for being here today. Can I ask you also to, to share your background and tell us uh, about how, with the partnership with the PTF, you've been able to help implement monitoring of the uh, public procurement in, uh, in Moldova? Uh, okay, uh, Mark, thank you for introduction. And uh, please uh, tell me if you see my screen. Okay. We do. Uh, and uh, Hadi, thank you for uh, introduction and uh, telling uh, participants about our project and the wonderful uh, feedback about our uh, common work in this project during uh, five years. Um, is a great opportunity for us uh, to have this partnership and to work together. 
Uh, and also, I'm very glad to have this opportunity to share our experience uh, from Republic of Moldova with uh, participants in this uh, uh, webinar. Uh, and uh, I, I saw in, uh, in the chat the question rel um, related to Republic of Moldova uh, and maybe only two words, the Republic of Moldova is uh, located in Southeast Europe and uh, you know, we have the neighborhood country, uh, Romanian and uh, Ukraine, maybe only to, to guide you in order to, to know us as location. <laughs> Uh, okay, I will try to to cover all the subject and uh, all our achievements in in the project uh, during uh, these fifteen minutes. Uh, I hope I will uh, do and I will do my best in order to to share our experience. Great, uh, Caroline, uh, can I just ask you to pop your presentation into presentation mode if you can? Yeah, yes, it's okay now. Um, we can see your PowerPoint, but not the actual. Um, slideshow. Uh, okay. Do you see now the, the slides, the, the large one? No. No. Uh, once again, I will stop uh, to share and I will put in full screen once again. Uh, sorry for this. I will try to do. No uh, mm -hmm. Second. This is technical issues. Mm -hmm. And now, please. No, it's still there. Uh, still your um your slides. Uh. That's also. The PowerPoint presentation, the yeah. slides. It's just the just the PowerPoint, not the actual slideshow. If you hit F five, then it will go into presentation mode. Okay, it's very strange, but you see the information from the slides, and maybe we, we can, can yeah. share. Uh, afterwards, the presentation with uh, participants in order to see, uh, I don't know, the full screen and to, to look into detail. I will tell all of what is included in the uh, We, we can see your slides. So you, you can carry on as you are. Okay. Uh, maybe I will start with uh, some words about our, my organization. Uh, it is, the full name is Institute for Development and Social Initiative, is uh, one of the first think tanks established here in the Republic of Moldova uh, in 1993. Uh, is a public benefit organization, is not affiliated to the government or political uh, uh, party. Uh, okay, it's okay now, yes? Perfect. Okay. Uh, and uh, also, uh, it is, is a research, education, and outreach organization that I activate in different fields. Uh, economic analysis, governments, uh, law, political science, strategic organization. And in our organization, we have three departments with different clusters. Uh, first department is focused on modernization and Europeanization of the public sector. Uh, the second department is related to functional market economy. And here we have a cluster with people uh, in public procurement. Uh, and the last department is related to competitive civil society. Uh, of course, uh, uh, people uh, who are interested in, uh, in our organization and all the publication, all activity uh, can open our web page and consult uh, uh, um, all our activities. Uh, also, uh, uh, can I ask to, to change the slide? Okay. Uh, maybe here uh, I can mention that uh, it is implemented during the year different project uh, with financial support uh, uh, from different donors, for example, World Bank Group, uh, UNDP, uh, EBRD, European Commission, and different uh, um, embassy and ministry in order to promote uh, here transparency and improve uh, the system related to public procurement. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, now I would like to, to speak about uh, uh, some publication related to public procurement. 
uh, because uh, it is published, elaborated and published a lot of publication related to the sectoral plan for anti-corruption action in the public procurement, uh, different policy analysis, uh, position paper, uh, policy recommendations, uh, and also analysis of uh, legislation uh, in um, our country, but also European directives. Uh, please uh, uh, move the, the next slide. Um, uh, we, this is uh, the, the publication um, that I tell you, and of course, you can find on our web page. Uh, the next slide is related to the European Award for Civil Society Organization in the Republic of Moldova uh, uh, at the Department of Democracy and Good Governance, what was awarded to our organization uh, after implementation uh, project related to public procurement. Uh, the next slide uh, mentioned the objective and uh, scope of the project, but Pahadi uh, already mentioned in uh, in the presentation about uh, these specific aspects. And I would like to continue with the next slide uh, uh, related to uh, each step or phase in our project. Uh, like uh, Hadi mentioned already, the inception phase, uh, we produce a lot of uh, analysis and we uh, delivered uh, some, uh, some um, position paper and uh, uh, evaluation of different aspect, re aspects related to stakeholders. Uh, and in these regards, we uh, organized meetings and interview with uh, several actors relevant in the public procurement, uh, for example, uh, from uh, development partners, uh, World Bank, for example, EBRD, EU delegation, US embassy, uh, UNDP, and other donors here in the Republic of Moldova. But also uh, we meet uh, relevant state institutions like Ministry of Finance, uh, Agency of Public Procurement, National Agency for Solving Complaint, uh, but also uh, we uh, discussed with uh, um, different representatives uh, from the Republic of Moldova, uh, from, from uh, contracting authorities, but also civil society organizations, uh, business associations, and also journalists. Uh, um, we also in this inception phase, uh, we uh, an, um, we produce an analysis related to the role and responsibilities of relevant institutions and actors in public procurement, including uh, SWOT analysis. And this information is included uh, in the next slides. Uh, and uh, uh, the relevant information from uh, uh, this uh, analysis was included also in our digital platform for civil society organization, but also uh, for different institutions. Uh, if you can uh, change the next slide. Uh, after this, uh, we review of uh, Moldovan procurement law uh, regulations and policies uh, related to public procurement. And please uh, change the slides in order to see only uh, some pictures of that. Um, uh, and also we can mention that uh, in our country, uh, um, there are a lot of modifications uh, related to legislation, regulation, and policies. Uh, and uh, these, um, um, I don't know, these analyses uh, produced in 2020 uh, need already to be updated. And for and uh, when we created this digital um, uh, platform for civil society organization, also uh, in 2024, we will already uh, included uh, all uh, the new, uh, new amendments and legislation to, to the legislations. Uh, if we can uh, uh, move to the next slide, and I would like to, to show you uh, that in this inception phase, also we produce an analysis and uh, we identified 
risk at all stages of the public procurement procedure. And uh, in this year, in 2024, we updated uh, this uh, publication and we involved uh, also uh, two ladies from our organization, Sub Grantees organization, uh, in, uh, to uh, to update this uh, this publication and to share with Ministry of Finance in order to be used by um, public procurement agency. Uh, please, the next slide. Uh, here is the publication and uh, about the monitoring public procurement guide. Uh, we produce uh, produce this publication for civil society organizations in order to help them uh, to monitor um, uh, the contracting authorities. Uh, we use for this publication uh, the red flags methodology elaborated by Transparency International, uh, but we adjust uh, uh, these tools to our realities and to our legislation in order to help civil society organization to have capacity uh, for a good uh, monitoring and to you know, produce good recommendation, uh, constructive recommendation for uh, contracting authority or uh, for uh, some, uh, uh, um, I don't know, Ministry of Finance in order to improve the situations. Uh, we used also this, uh, this monitoring public guide uh, when we uh, delivered to civil society organization the training program. And uh, please move the next slide. Uh, and uh, here is the key element of the training program. Before the training, uh, we um, uh, organized a survey with uh, civil society organizations, journalists, civil activists, and also independent monitors. Here was included also a journal investigative journalist uh, because uh, we consider also uh, they are very close to public procurement and they need to know and to have the capacity uh, to do the job. And of course, for the training program was developed uh, curricula, training materials, case study, examples, practical exercise. Uh, and uh, this training program contained 24 training sessions and was for uh, 35 participants uh, from different region of, uh, of the country, from the north, center, and the south of the country. And of course, uh, this uh, training program include also coaching, also uh, mentorship, uh, and uh, always we give some advice uh, to the participants who continue their work in uh, monitoring public procurement. Uh, um, please move to the next slide. And uh, I would like to very shortly to speak about uh, the the next phase of our project is related to monitoring and had already mentioned in our project, uh, we, um, uh, we split uh, uh, the competition in two phases. Uh, and of course, uh, for each phases, we elaborate all the documentation, um, uh, announcement, uh, guide, uh, term of reference, uh, info session, evaluation process, uh, and uh, recommendation for civil society organizations. Uh, and I would like to mention that uh, um, a lot of uh, civil society organization apply for uh, the grant competitions. And in the first round, we selected eight organizations uh, in order to, to monitor uh, contracting authorities. And uh, we selected uh, uh, the best organization from center, north, and south of the country. Uh, please uh, move to the next uh, slide. And maybe here you can see only uh, our maps of, uh, of the country, Republic of Moldova. And here you can see uh, uh, the applicant uh, was from the north, center, and the south. Uh, and uh, in the right part of the slide, you can see 
the winner of uh, of the applications. Uh, please go to to the next slide, and maybe here is more important uh, findings and results uh, after the first round of sub grants. Uh, and uh, I would like to share only uh, uh, only few um, uh, numbers in order to um, to understand uh, the big achievement of our sub grantees. Um, was uh, as a, a result of the first round of sub grants, uh, uh, seventy one authority were monitored here in Republic of Moldova. Um, with a cumulative estimated financial value of the procedure approximately um, 93 million of lay. Uh, also, these uh, eight organizations produced uh, 231 publications, and here is included article, reports, investigations, publication on uh, different web pages, social media, uh, summer schools, infographics, talks, uh, training events, and so on. Uh, and uh, maybe uh, also uh, very important for us uh, is the, the next step because um, uh, our goal not is only to monitor and to put a finger uh, the bad, uh, I don't know, practices, but also to come, uh, come with uh, some uh, constructive recommendations. And uh, these eight organizations uh, produce uh, 69 notifications and recommendations based of uh, the findings in after the um, monitoring uh, uh, projects. Uh, of course, it is in PTF, uh, we uh, monitor and we track uh, uh, this uh, notification and recommendation in order to see, uh, I don't know, not only the output, but also the outcome and uh, how this uh, recommendation uh, will improve the situation for uh, contracting authorities, for the um, regulation body and for, for the systems. Um, okay, uh, maybe um, we can uh, uh, speak more about uh, challenges and about the uh, success and also the achievements and lessons le learned uh, of our sub grantees um, during uh, questions and answers, but also I put here. I don't know, four or five uh, slides uh, in order to, uh, um, to share with you some of the findings and lesson learned. And uh, you will, um, will have a possibility to, to read or we can discuss later uh, this aspect. Uh, and uh, maybe very quick, I will uh, go to to the second round of sub grants. Maybe only a few words I can mention. In the second round of sub grants was uh, uh, were awarded five organization. Uh, we are um, at the end of the processes, and maybe later one we will uh, we can do this summary and lesson learned. Uh, maybe in the next uh, meeting with you, what? Why not? Uh, I would like to to kindly ask you to to move uh, uh, at the uh, um, uh, to the uh, EDS and PTF uh, uh, when launch the first time in Moldova. The coalition for monitoring public procurement is twenty three. Uh, number of the slides. Uh, okay. Okay, it's here. Okay. Uh, we consider it's very important to have this platform of discussion and to agree between a civil society organization and to consolidate their capacity and to have uh, one voice in order to promote 
um, I don't know, transparency and the efficiency in public procurement. And for this reason, we created this coalition for monitoring in public procurement. Uh, there are uh, 30 civil society organizations, journalists, experts, in, uh, and uh, independent monitor uh, here in the Republic of Moldova. We discuss uh, uh, during uh, different meetings and conferences about the most pressure issue and subject related to public procurement. Um, and uh, we propose some recommendation in order to discuss them to the next level. Uh, I would like, uh, uh, please uh, move the next slide. Uh, and also the next slide, please. Uh, here, uh, I would like to, to mention before to go to NPPP, an important component in our project about our cooperation with uh, um, uh, stakeholders in, pub in public procurement here in the Republic of Moldova. Uh, because uh, uh, we are looking forward uh, in order to improve the system and we understand what uh, we need to monitor, but also we need to have uh, constructive discussion. And in this context, uh, EDIS participated uh, at um, uh, different meetings and public discussions with Minister of Finance related to national strategy uh, at the chapter in, uh, uh, and related to public procurement. Uh, and also when they publish different uh, amendment to the legislation or draft uh, or government decision, always uh, our organization is invited uh, to, to come with some recommendation in order to improve the situation. Uh, the next slide, please. Um, and uh, in this project, during this project, we um, signed with Ministry of Finance a, a cooperation agreement. Uh, and this document includes a commitment um, uh, that Ministry of Finance will be um, part of our national program, uh, NPPP. And I will tell you later what this means. Please, the next uh, slides, slide uh, uh, is uh, about uh, two our uh, cooperation agreement with National Agency for Solving Complaint and Card of Accounts. Uh, and uh, 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 they, and I tell um, at the beginning uh, this organization, National Agency for Solving Complaint, ask us uh, to be monitored by civil society organizations. The next slide, please. Uh, EDIS and PTF, uh, we um, organized bilateral meetings with uh, key stakeholders in public procurement, starting uh, with Parliamentary Committee on Economy, Budget and Finance, PPA, National Agency for Solving Complaint, uh, Card of Accounts, uh, and a lot of uh, other uh, stakeholders. And uh, we created uh, this national platform in public procurement. We included here uh, also civil society organization representatives from our coalition of monitors. And uh, during uh, the discussions, uh, bilateral meetings, um, there were proposed already 45 topics in total for the next uh, future agenda of the platform. Please, the next slide. And here I can show you only a few uh, pictures from our first meeting uh, and when we launch the um, this uh, national platform for public procurement. Uh, the next slide, please, is related to an online platform uh, created specially for civil society organization uh, uh, that aims to keep a finger on the pulse of public procurement in the Republic of Moldova. Uh, please visit us on Pulse Acquisiti. Uh, point and there, uh, and you can find starting from publication, press releases, uh, investigations, uh, legislations, uh, civil society organization, monitors, uh, their products. Uh, also, you can find uh, information, detailed information about NPPP 
and uh, all the documents produced uh, uh, within um, uh, first three uh, meetings uh, that we organized in the projects. But also we have, uh, uh, I don't know, a survey related uh, how many civil society organizations monitor the public procurement. Also, we have questions that you can address to some experts in public procurement. Uh, very important, we have different instruments in order to monitor public procurement. Uh, and uh, you can see here all the events in the Republic of Moldova related to public procur uh, to monitoring and public procurement also. Uh, and uh, maybe the next slide is related to uh, visibility is a big component in our project because through uh, visibility uh, advocacy, uh, we push uh, in, uh, the authority to, to make uh, some modification and to, to be um, uh, very correctly in order to use public money. The next slide, and maybe here, uh, the next slide here, I can invite you to, to find also in this uh, uh, online platform, uh, pulsakiziti.md, uh, also our newsletters. Uh, the newsletters are available in Romanian, but also in English, and you can find uh, all the news, all our uh, publication monitoring reports, um, small part, or, um, but uh, uh, useful information, but we, we um, publish uh, through these newsletters uh, every quarter. Uh, the next slides, uh, the next slides is related to visibility. Also on uh, uh, Pulse Akiziti, uh, um, there, uh, there are more than 100 of press releases uh, produces, produced uh, in our project. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, also is uh, uh, some uh, uh, visual or some, uh, I don't know, print screen from, uh, from different uh, uh, publication from social media also uh, in order to, to produce uh, and to promote uh, uh, our findings and to, to push pressure for, uh, um, uh, to take into consideration our recommendations. Uh, sorry for for the time. Um, I hope we have uh, enough time for discussion and questions. Um, uh, yeah, I hope we... uh, uh, our experience uh, uh, was interested for you, and uh, you can I don't know um, uh, take some uh, some practices or some exercises some component from our project also uh, in your country and uh, to adjust uh, uh, for, for a different situation, uh, but to keep an eye on public money and how we are used in order to, to be more useful for, uh, for citizens. Thank you. Great, thank you, Carolina. Um, we do have a few questions here, um, so I'll, I'll jump onto those uh, quickly now. So we have, um, well, first of all, the, the first question, it was from a little while ago. Can you expand, and this was to, to uh, Dr. Fink, could you expand on how the public authorities use and engage with the MPPP? Uh, yes, uh, we have discussed bilaterally with all of them, and we uh, explain the advantage in order to be part of uh, uh, these MPPP. And we explain that we have responsibility uh, on this field, on public procurement. And this is a good opportunity to have at the same table, in the same room, all the um, stakeholders and to, and to discuss and to, be uh, and to be moderated by civil society organization in order to see the best opportunity in order to solve some problem, some issue in public pr procurement. For example, uh, if we speak about the topic related to appeals, for example, uh, in our country, there are some stakeholders that they mentioned, uh, we don't need to 
to include in our legislation a tax uh, uh, for economical operator to participate or to, uh, to have an appeal. But also there are contracting authority that mentioned that uh, uh, economical operator uh, uh, sometimes is not a good fate and they submit an appeal in order to block uh, the procurement, for example. And in the same room, we have different actors and we can see the different position, but also to understand what is better to do in order to have um, to improve the system and to have a good uh, um, chance to develop uh, uh, this sector. Can I can I just I know that we're almost out of time, but I think this is the most important component of our of our project the, that makes the the really the difference. Um, so the the as Karina was saying, several um, um, public sector agencies have signed a memorandum of, of of agreement. Most importantly, the Ministry of Finance, who is the public procurement authority, is part of the Ministry of Finance in the Republic of Moldova. They consider themselves a member of the, of this platform. So at the in, in inaugural um, session, there's terms of reference and operating rules. Uh, so they consider them part of this standing uh, mechanism that discusses um, different topics. They propose topics. They have themselves proposed that they would like in the next meeting to discuss the the new law on public procurement. They sit in the room um, and they receive uh, an input that comes from civil society, which is a paper which is based on the the lessons from um, our monitors through the grants projects and their other work. We commission a paper. We discuss it in in the coalition and then it's tabled in the national platform um, at the multi at the meeting and they discuss as carolina was saying the different perspectives they come up with joint recommendations that are then documented by the secretariat of the platform and submitted to these stakeholders and they respond so the ministry of finance will receive or has received a letter the state road administration has received a letter with recommendations that come from civil society among others and they respond to 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 this they confirm that they've received it they're considering it and they have responded to some of them so i think it's really an, an excellent mechanism um that everybody is is engaging in that's great thank you and we do have a couple more questions i think we'll take one more and then if we can take the others offline then we can respond back to uh, to um, those so um <clears throat> there's one it's actually from one of your colleagues uh, Haiti. It was trying a similar project in a Balkan country. And when it came to the investigative journalists, they were warned that local newspapers were owned by big corporations, which very much controlled what could be published. So is that is that a, a, a problem you see in many countries that you've been to, including Moldova? Uh, please, Hadi, you can start and I will continue. Yeah, well, I... Um... I, I don't have a lot of experience outside at Moldova. Um, the, the, what we've learned there is that working with um, investigative journalists and with CSOs is, is quite different. Um, and I think Karolina is about uh, to, to say that. I think I'd, I'd pass on to you how the experience was, uh, was different between the two. Uh, yes, um, but here our uh, investigative journalist uh, in the Republic of Moldova is considered also civil society organization. And uh, here we have uh, a small number, but a good uh, ju investigative journalist, and they put pressure and do um, a very good job in mm -hmm. order to, um, to see how we spend public money. Uh, also, uh, we have uh, uh, some organization, Kusens, uh, uh, if you remember, uh, they uh, was awarded on the Tulip Press Award competition uh, after they publish one investigation in our project, for example. Uh, uh, and also, uh, uh, Ziaru de Garde very, um, is very popular here in the Republic of Moldova, also member of our coalition of monitor, and also was uh, um, uh, in our first round of subgrants who produce a lot of very good materials. And afterwards, the stakeholders 
um, take some uh, um, uh, I don't know how to say in English uh, um, take care of these uh, these cases in order to uh, investigate um, by uh, uh, authority that is in charge of this aspect. Can I add one more sentence, Mark? Um, uh, the the difference also is that the investigative journalists, they were the ones that we've worked with that Carolina was mentioning, they had excellent results. Um, they Perfect. uncovered really um, excellent things that um, went wrong. They are not so interested in providing recommendations. They are not so interested in receiving coaching. So it's quite different. They will show a lot of, if you have good ones, um, like we were lucky to have, um, but they, we want to also improve the system. We want to make sure that what went wrong will be rectified. So we need the CSO to say, okay, this went wrong. We have a list of all the things that should happen on the case basis, uh, what should uh, happen. They're not interested in that. So that's it's different working with investigative journalists and with civil society organizations. So in the project, in our project, where we also try to improve the system, try to make sure that things are rectified, um, it's uh, the CSOs were um, I think more suitable to that to that end. And uh, uh, and maybe one more difference between civil society organization and the uh, journalists. Um, in our uh, subgrant program, uh, we ask uh, to review all the paper before to to be published, because it's the name of our organization, is the name I don't know of PTF, and we need to to approve all the uh, documents. But uh, for civil society organization is work, but for journalists they uh, they keep the documents and materials. Uh, and not share with us, but only to publish because uh, we have different policy, internal policy of um, sharing the, the information. This is also was challenge for us, but we understand and uh, oh, we know uh, was a good uh, uh, journalist and we are confident in their work. <laughs> that's good. So this, I mean, they're very useful to have, but you're not relying solely on them. So I, I guess that's kind of negates that issue. Um, we are a little over time now, so we're going to have to draw this to a close. So I'd like to thank uh, thank you, Heidi and Carolina, for your participation today. Um, I personally love to learn about these projects because they're doing so much good and really improving people's lives, um, but they generally don't get much publicity. So thank you for the work that you're doing. Thank you for sharing these successes with us. Uh, and I truly hope they can be expanded into more regions. Um, thank you too to our audience. We really appreciate your support and I hope that we'll see you again on our next event in uh, in later on this month, 17th of October. So thank you again, everyone. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day ahead.